Okay, let's do some math for fun, and this time we'll do something really, really fun. This is actually from the 2020 Oxford Math Admission Test. So if you want to go to Oxford, this is one of the questions that you should know how to solve. And if you want to see the rest of the questions on the test, I will have the link to the test in the description for your convenience. Here's the question. We are given this graph with all the labels, and the equation is y squared minus y that's equal to x to the third power minus x. And when I saw this, I was really excited because this is actually just a specific case of the elliptic curves. And the general case is this, y squared is equal to x to the third power plus ax plus b. And this curve has application in cryptography. If you guys want to learn more about it, I will have some relevant links in the description for your convenience as well. But let's see how we can tackle the equations and see what kind of questions they'll ask. Yeah? And it's not just two, all right? We have a couple more, so I can only fit in two for now. But anyway though, for the first part, we are gonna find out the values of A and B, which is here and here, and they are just on the x-axis, right? So of course, we know the y is equal to zero, so all we have to do is let y be zero, and then plug in, so we have zero squared minus zero, that's equal to x to the third power minus x, and yeah, it's the first part of the question, so yes, it's pretty easy, and then yeah, we should feel really good about this right here, right? But anyway, though, we can solve this by factoring x, x plus one, x minus one, and that's equal to zero. Well, this will give us x is equal to zero, which is actually this point, but that's not a, will not b. So let's look at this, which is actually going to give us a, and that's going to give us b. So from here, we know that a is going to be negative one, and then from here, we know b is equal to positive one. So that is it, right? Straightforward. We should feel really happy about it because we just got two points. <laughs> now, for the second part, we are going to find out what delta is. And notice delta is this horizontal y value right here, right? Well, notice the equation is y squared minus y and is equal to x to the power minus x. Remember the general form I gave you guys earlier is what? y squared equal to x to the third power and so on and so on, right? So, I don't really want to have like y squared minus y, I just want to see the y one time. So that calls out to be the time that we should do some completing the square. And the truth is, on the test actually gives you hint, uh, you should complete the square, but I just didn't write it down. Anyway though, let's just go ahead and do, make that happen. y squared minus y and leave a space, and that's equal to x to the third power minus x. Is this one? Yes, it is. So go ahead and look at this is negative one. Divided by two, which is negative one half, and then square that, which is one over four. And that's the magic number that we are going to add on both sides, because this way we can complete the square on the left-hand side, and this is going to give us y minus one half, and then we can square that, and that's equal to x to the third power minus x plus one over four. So, as you can see, when we have this quantity right here, this is telling us, originally we have the graph like this, but we just bring up one half unit. That's all. Therefore, from here we know delta is equal to one over two. So again, we got another two points or so. Very nice, right? And now for the next part, we are going to explain why the curve is symmetric about the line y is equal to delta. So as you can see, what we found out earlier is that delta is equal to one half. So it's this horizontal line right here. And the truth is it is symmetrical right here, right? But of course, we have to do this mathematically, so we better use the equation. And the way to do it is, we can just look at this equation that we got earlier and solve for y first. So from here, I will just square both sides. Don't forget the plus minus, and then also bring the negative one half to the other side. So notice that we actually have the equation as y equals one half, and then plus or minus, and we have the square root and all that stuff, right? x plus third power minus x plus one over four, like this. Now, notice that we have the one half and also the plus or minus right here. So the idea is that if the point, let me just write it as x comma, and then again, the key right here is one half, which is the delta value. And then here, let's put down the first part, which is the plus square root of x to the third power minus x plus one over four. Suppose this right here is on the curve. Well, from the picture, you can see that, let me just use this part right here. If we have the x value right here, then what's next is, of course, 
the corresponding y value is one half, and then we have the square root part, right? So I'll just write this down as one half plus the square root. And um, the square root is going to be the same down here, right? So what you can do is you can say like plus, let me just use capital Y for simplicity purpose. Well, once you have this, then what you know is you have the corresponding points down below here. And again, this distance is the same as that distance, right? So that's why it's symmetrical. And I'm just going to write this down like this. Then, uh, so is the point. And it would be x comma, and then again the key is one half, which is the delta value, and then minus square root of x to the third power minus x plus one over four. So uh, I think that's pretty much it. And in fact, this is how the official solution wants you to explain it as well. So I'm just going to make a little note right here, real quick. Minus, and again, just use the capital Y for that. And of course, if you have the point right here. This distance and that distance will be the same you have that so that's pretty much it so now for the next part we are going to find a cubic equation with roots being equal to alpha beta and gamma well just like what we talked about earlier as you can see this curve has been brought up one half unit right so all we have to do now is pretend that this right here is our new x-axis and we can do so by letting y is equal to one half and plug into here and that's pretty much it so I'm just going to say let y is equal to one half, and of course we'll just get one half minus one half, and then square that, and that's equal to x to the third power minus x plus one over four. Therefore, the cubic equation is of course just going to be x to the third power minus x plus one over four being equal to zero. Then it's guaranteed to have alpha, beta, and gamma as its root. So that's pretty much it. And then for the next part, we're actually going to calculate alpha plus beta plus gamma. Well, of course, we have two ways to do this. The first way is, of course, go ahead and use the cubic formula to solve this cubic equation, and then just add out all the solutions. But no, don't do that. Life doesn't have to be that hard. So I'll show you guys an easy way to do it. So here's the deal. Let's write that down. We have x to the third power minus x plus 1 over 4. And because we know it has roots alpha, beta, and gamma, so we can actually write this into its factorative form. Namely, we can write this as, and because right here the coefficient is 1, so we'll just have x and then minus alpha, and then multiply it with x minus beta, and then multiply by x minus gamma. And yes, if you know the VH theorem, then you can already see that. The answer to this right here is just equal to zero, but let me show you guys all the work. So let's go ahead and multiply this out and see what happens. As you can see, when we multiply this and that, we will get x squared, and then this is going to be negative beta x, and then negative alpha x. So let's factor out the x, so we actually will get minus, and then we have alpha plus beta inside, like so, and then both of them have the x, so let me just factor out the x and put it right here. And in the meantime, yes, I'm writing down the beta better. And lastly, we have the plus alpha beta. And then, of course, we have to multiply by x minus gamma. Well, continue. This times this will give us the x to a third power term. Next, it will be the x to a second power term, right? Which is achieved by x squared times negative gamma. And then when we do this times that, we will get negative alpha plus beta, and then x squared, right? So let's factor out the x squared and then combine the terms. So all in all, we actually get negative, and then we'll just put everything inside. So actually, we'll just get alpha plus beta plus gamma. And this right here is with the x squared term. And that's it, because we have exactly what we need right here already. We don't need to continue. Well. On the left hand side, do we have any x squared term? No, we don't. So what does that mean? That means all this right here has to be equal to zero, right? So negative alpha plus beta plus gamma has to be equal to zero. Of course, it's implied that alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to zero, just like that. So the answer is just equal to zero. Done. Okay, before we continue, let me tell you about Brilliant. Brilliant is a math and science website and app with a focus on problem solving, and they have over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. And as you can probably guess, 
Yes, my favorite courses are Algebra and Calculus. And recently I've been working on their logic course, and I really like their problems because how challenging they are. And let me tell you, when you are taking brilliant courses, you are not just memorizing facts. Instead, you are active thinking. Brilliant puzzles you, surprise you, and expand your understanding of the modern world. They have something for everybody, regardless what your level is. You can get started with basic algebra or geometry, or advanced topics like calculus or quantum computing. Better yet, use the link in the description, brilliant.org slash blackpenrepen, that way you can get 20% of discount to their premium subscription. Thank you guys for checking it out. So now for the last part, it actually has a few more parts, right? So let's see. So first we're going to let C be the circle with these two points, which is here and here, be the ends of a diameter, right? And we're going to write down the equation of the circle C. So if you have this and that as the diameter, well, we are just going to have a circle that's going to look like this, right? So I will try my best to give you guys a circle like this. And of course, uh, technically they are going to touch each other right here, right? But just, yeah, I'm kind of messed up with my picture. So we're going to find out the equation for C. How can we do that? Of course, we need to know the center. So let's go ahead and write down the center right here. Well, the center is somewhere here. How do we do it? Here we have the x values, right? And we just have to find out the midpoint. And the midpoint is just going to be the sum of these two and divided by two. So the center is just going to be alpha plus beta divided by two. And the y value right here is just delta, which is one half, if you would like, right? And then the equation is just going to be x minus this. So x minus alpha plus beta and then divided by two. And we are going to square that. And then we add it with y minus this, and then we square that. And lastly, we have to make this equal to the radius squared. And now, what is the radius? Well, this right here is beta, this right here is alpha, so the length is just going to be beta minus alpha, and we just have to cut that into half, so that we can get the radius. So here, we will just get beta minus alpha, and then divide it by 2. So this right here is the equation for the uh, circle C. We have to continue with part 6. We are going to show that C actually intersects S, and by S, we mean the original curve right here. I just didn't write it down earlier, right? And we are going to show that they actually two intercept each other at two more points. That's why I told you guys that they actually intercept here and then somewhere here. And again, it's symmetrical, so they actually share the same x coordinate. So once we show that, of course, we are also going to find out the x coordinate in terms of delta. So now let's see how we can make that happen. Well, we know the curve in black has this as the equation, but better yet, we know this right here is also its equation. And the reason we want to look at this is because this right here has this part, right? And we know the circle has the equation right here, and they have the common part right here, y minus one half squared. So all we have to do is just combine these two equations together. So I'm just going to write it down like this. I will just say this is number one here, and this is number two. From one and two together, one and two, right? This is going to give us that, well, we will have to plug in this right here into there. That's it, right? So I'm going to write down that part first. We have x minus alpha plus beta and then divide by 2 square plus we get that which is x to the third power plus x minus 1 over 4 and then we still have this which is equal to beta minus alpha divided by 2 square all right now just have to work this equation out and let's see how we can make that happen first off though we know that this equation has two answers already. The circle has the endpoints here and here by what we were told earlier. So just say, note, right? we know alpha and beta are solutions. Uh, I'm just going to call this equation star right here. Right? To Maybe I'll just say three, so star, because I used one over one and two over there already. So this is equation three, right? Now, notice this equation is what? It's cubic, right? So we must have another one. Let's just go ahead and write down the other one. What's the other one? I'm just going to call it to be another Greek letter. And <laughs> I took a look at the solution that they have and I used the hardest. Actually, 
the second hardest Greek letter for the third solution. So I'm going to follow that as well because I really didn't know what other letter I could use. So I'm going to say le theta. And it's so hard for me to do. Le theta be the third solution. So now check this out. From this equation, we see that we only have x to the second power one time. And the coefficient for that is just equal to 1. And why do we care about the coefficient of x squared from this equation? Well, here we have all these three solutions for this cubic equation. And then we talk about the sum of a cubic solution already. Right? So let me just write this down right here for you guys. Since the coefficient, coefficient of the x squared in equation 3 is 1. And I think this should be rather clear. You don't really need to multiply it out. So we know that when we add up all the solutions right here, alpha, beta, and also theta, <laughs> this right here is going to be equal to the negative of the coefficient of x squared. Right? Cool. So now, how can we make the connection? Well, we know alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to 0. This means alpha plus beta is equal to negative gamma. So we can just replace these two with negative gamma. So we know this right here, negative gamma plus theta, it's, this is, I don't know what this is. This right here, negative gamma plus theta, it's, this is, I don't know what this is. Sorry, uh, let me try again. It's equal to negative 1. So finally, I will just say the third solution is equal to what? Bring this to the other side. So we have gamma minus 1. And that's it. So perhaps to make everything clear, you can see that they do intercept at two other points. Right? Because once you intercept right here above, you also intercept down below because of the symmetric argument that we talked about earlier. And right here, I can tell you the x coordinate right here is just gamma minus 1. So I would just say this is gamma minus 1 for the x value. And then the y value, I don't know. Uh, you could find it out, but like, let's not worry about it. So that's it. Really cool, huh? And it's, man, what an adventure of all this. So as always, that's it.